In the past two weeks, the number of cases of COVID-19 outside China has increased 13-fold, and the number of affected countries has tripled. There are now more than 118,000 cases in 114 countries, and 4,291 people have lost their lives. Thousands more are fighting for their lives in hospitals. In the days and weeks ahead, we expect to see the number of cases, the number of deaths, and the number of affected countries climb even higher. WHO has been assessing this outbreak around the clock, and we're deeply concerned both by the alarming levels of spread and severity and by the alarming levels of inaction. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Coronaviruses are a highly diverse family of viruses that usually cause mild to moderate upper respiratory tract illnesses like the common cold. They are generally broken down into four subtypes, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta, with the latter two only occurring in animals. Three new coronaviruses have emerged from animal reservoirs over the past two decades to cause serious and widespread illness and death. These are severe acute respiratory syndrome, Middle East respiratory syndrome, and recently SARS-CoV-2, known commonly as COVID-19. When these viruses jump from animals to humans, it's called a spillover event. Since the mid-1960s, humans have seen seven different coronavirus outbreaks. Let's look at the steps involved in a coronavirus infection. In order to fully understand how the coronavirus spreads, we first must look at the basic structure of the viron, which consists of structural proteins named S, E, M and N. SARS-CoV-2 can enter the cell in two ways by endosomes, or via plasma membrane fusion. Both ways involve areas of the coronaviruses called spikes to bind to cell surface receptors called angiotensin converting enzyme 2. And both ways require cleavage of the S protein by proteases such as cathepsin, which causes the viral and host membranes to fuse together, releasing the viral RNA. Yeah. This cleavage can also happen at the cell surface by transmembrane protease serin 2 which allows COVID-19 to fuse directly with the membrane, again releasing viral RNA into the cytoplasm of the cell. Yeah. Once inside the cytoplasm, the viral genomic RNA is then read by the host's ribosomes, which produce large polyproteins. These large polyproteins are then proteolized into smaller pieces by proteases embedded in the polyproteins. These pieces then assemble to form replicase transcriptase complex. Replicase transcriptase complex reads the genomic RNA and produces a copy called minus RNA, the antisense strand. This minus RNA is copied to make more RNA for packaging into new viruses. Once the new viral RNA is being made, the virus then needs to start producing its structural proteins. In order to do this, it needs to produce positive mRNA strands. It does this by reading the minus RNA strands in a discontinuous way, which produces positive mRNA strands of different lengths. These are called subgenomic messenger RNAs. These subgenomic messenger RNAs can then be translated by the host ribosomes to produce viral proteins to include spike, membrane, envelope and nucleocapsid proteins. Double membrane vesicles, convoluted membranes and small open double membrane spherules create a protective microenvironment for viral genomic RNA replication and transcription of subgenomic mRNAs. Spike, membrane and envelope proteins are produced by the ribosomes at the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum and are then incorporated into their membranes. However, the nucleocapsid proteins are produced in the cytoplasm. Spike, membrane and envelope proteins 
produced at the ER transit to the ER to Golgi intermediate compartment. Multiple copies of the nuclear capsid proteins are produced and are responsible for packaging genomic RNA into helical structures. These interact with hydrophobic M proteins at the ER to Golgi intermediate compartment, thereby forming the viral structure. This is then transported by exocytosis out of the cell through the Golgi, destroying the cell in the process and moving on to the next cell for the cycle to repeat. Fatality. Hi, my name is Mr. Science, aka Salim. If you're new to the channel, please remember to like and subscribe. And for more teaching resources, you can visit my website at www.mrscience.co.uk.